she asked me if I wash my hair and it, it, it took me back. Hey guys, it's Ifema. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I am going to be filming a micro locks video for you guys. It's been a while, so I'm very excited. I have not one, not two, but three LED lights in my little room. And um, I'm really excited to see how this is gonna come out because I'm not really good at lighting, but I'm trying to force myself to learn the basics because the days are getting shorter and I'm not gonna be able to rely on my window as much anymore. But anyway, it's not about my lighting. Today, it is all about my micro locks and how I maintain them. When my sister was here, she asked me if I wash my hair and it, it, it took me back. I was like, what do you mean? But then I thought, that's actually a fair question, right? If you don't have locks or you're not familiar with locks, you might not really know what gets into it because all I really tell people is how I just wake up and go and it's like maintenance free, but it's not 100% maintenance free. So today's video, I've just been collecting some clips over um, the past couple of weeks, just showing you guys what goes into keeping my locks looking amazing. I mean, don't you think? So let's just backtrack a little bit and give you guys some background information because in all my micro locks videos, I get asked the same question. So let's just start here if you're new, right? Okay, I got my locks installed in November of 2021, which means that I'm coming up to about the 10 month mark period at this point in time. I started my locks with 10 and a half inches of hair approximately. My locks were started with the interlocking method and I have 548 locks. At least I did at the point of install. As far as I know, I haven't lost any locks. None of my locks have been combined and if they have been, I haven't been told. My locks were installed in Nigeria. I used a company called Any Braids and I am retying my locks here in London. I live in London and I will also link the salon that I used to go to, but I don't go there anymore. I go to a sister lock loctician who I found on the sister locks website. So I will link the website for you and then you can just find whoever's closest to you. So now I'm gonna start off with what I do to my hair from the least often to the most often. I thought that would be an interesting way to organize it for whatever reason. I do my reties the least often. That's probably what most people would do the least often. I'm currently on a five to six week schedule with my new loctician. We're still trying to tweak it. My first retie with her was at four weeks, which was a little too soon. And at six weeks, I had loads of slippage. Watch my last <laughs> micro locks update um, to kind of figure out what that's about. But yeah, so now we're at the tweaking at about five weeks. So we're gonna see how that goes. What is a retie? I had taken a couple of clips actually at my last retie. So I'm just gonna speak over the clips because they're quite short. But essentially during a retie session, the regrowth that I would have gotten in that four to six week period needs to be locked because obviously my hair doesn't grow locked out of my head, my hair grows loose. So during a retie session, each lock is individually picked and basically locked into itself. And that way it joins my existing hair, which is locked. Um, as you can see, my current locticians actually use a crochet tool and that is what was used to install my hair. Um, at Just You Salon, they used, I think what is the official sister locks tool. So I think different locticians do different things. The outcome is pretty much the same. Reties have, for me, have taken anything from three hours to four hours, depending on how much repairs I have to have done. Because of the texture of my hair, I've been struggling with slippage. Slippage is basically when your hair kind of unravels out of the lock. So that's been happening a lot around, along the perimeter of my hair. My reties cost anything from 70 to 80 pounds for the retie itself. And then I have also paid for washing my locks a couple times and that tends to be around the 20 pound mark as well. But more recently, I've actually been washing my hair myself 
Which brings me on to the thing that I do the second most frequently, which is washing my locks. So because my locks are not mature yet, I have to do this thing called braiding and banding. And essentially what that means is I have to braid my hair down and then band the end of the braids. And you can just like watch this little clip to see what I'm doing. And that just helps to prevent slippage. So again, the unraveling of the lock while you're washing your hair. So for me, my loctician has recommended that I actually cornrow the perimeter of my hair to help with slippage when I'm washing my locks. And I don't know how to cornrow. I know like, I feel like we need a support group for all the black people that don't know how to cornrow, but I do know how to flat twist. So I flat twisted my hair the last time I washed it. And then I um, braided and banded the rest of my hair. taking the camera into the shower. It's a lot of work, so we're just gonna do a simulation. Usually around this time I have some music playing, so let's play Beyonce. Oh, it took on my eye. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I just finished washing. My hair. What is washing loose hair compared to washing locked hair like? Let's talk about that. So one of my biggest gripes about when I used to wash my hair before, when it was loose, was that all the shed hair would like come out in the shower and I would have to spend all this time afterwards like picking up all the loose hair or like running it down the drain. You don't have that problem when you're washing locked hair. It's so much easier. It's just literally almost no shed hair. Maybe like one or two like strands of hair will pop off because obviously all your shed hair is in the lock. So that is the biggest difference and the biggest blessing for me because it just makes it a lot nicer. <laughs> Having said that, I guess the time that I would typically have spent detangling, I now spend braiding and banding. But again, it's just one step. So I'm not having to pre-poo and deep condition and condition. I literally just wash my hair with shampoo and let it air dry. So I've just wringed out all the excess water and now I have a cotton t-shirt and I'm just gonna go over each section and ring it again. The great thing about having locks is that you don't have to have a pre-poo and a conditioner and all these different pro products. <laughs> all you need is a shampoo. So the shampoo I used on this day was actually a shampoo that I had got from Just You Hair Salon. It's by Almacado. It's their starter shampoo. The last time I washed my hair at the salon, my loctician used the official sister lock shampoo, which I actually really liked because it had a really like thick lather and I felt like it left my hair feeling really clean. And more recently, I've actually picked up a completely different product because my friend recommended it to me and I'm using the Dr. Broner's Castile Soap in Peppermint. She swears by it. I cannot wait for next wash day because I feel like that peppermint is just going to be so soothing on my scalp. At least with locks that are not fully mature, like my locks, you want to stay away from moisturizing shampoos. So you want to use something with sulfates as far as I know, and you want to use something that's not moisturizing because that can kind of slow down the lock process. That again is what I've been told. So everything you hear in this video, run it by your loctician and after you run it by your loctician, like do what feels best for you. So in terms of frequency, I've been washing my hair right before reties. That's all I do. Because I've been struggling with slippage, I'm trying not to mess with my hair too, too much. I don't take out my braids until my hair is completely dry. I try as much as possible not to disrupt my locks while I'm washing them. I just concentrate on my scalp and around the front of my hair. I think I could probably be even gentler even though I barely touch it now. I just like run the soap through it. <laughs> now we are coming on to what I do 
on a daily basis. All I do is mist my hair with plain water. I got one of those little mist bottles and I just spritz it all over my hair. And the main reason why I stopped using rose water was because I found this girl, I actually, I'm going to try and find the video and link her profile here, because her hair is amazing. And I thought this might actually help with my dry scalp. I haven't been doing it every single day because I'm still quite, you know, nervous about it, even though I probably shouldn't be. I mist my scalp with the water, let's say every other day. And then I would say on a weekly basis, I go in with jojoba oil. I just put it on the balls of my fingers and massage it into my scalp. And then I kind of like do a check around the perimeter of my hair because that's where I can see the best. And sometimes I'll get these like white crusty bits around the perimeter of my hair that I can see. And I'll put some jojoba oil directly on just my scalp to help get rid of that because obviously no one wants to walk around with like crust in their hair, right? Because that's just gross. <laughs> I tie a scarf on my head when I'm going to bed and I've realized that that really helps with my slippage. I think that's probably the one thing that I can attribute to helping with slippage. Before I used to sleep with a bonnet and I've realized that with a bonnet, your hair can kind of move around a lot more in the bonnet, obviously. But when you tie a headscarf, I think that keeps your hair in place more. At least that's how I've rationalized it. Cause I realized that my locks were looking a lot neater and fresher for longer ever since I started using a scarf as opposed to a bonnet. So that's one pro tip I want to give to you guys. That also helps with lint, which is another issue that that people talk about a lot with locks. Touch wood, <laughs> I have not struggled with the lint issue. For me, it's not anything that I'm like super conscious about, but the one thing that I have consistently done is tie my hair with a silk scarf. So I definitely wanted to mention that to you guys. And that is everything I do to my hair. Like, that is it. I cannot talk enough about the freedom that I feel ever since I locked my hair, guys. My microlock videos are definitely some of the most popular videos on my channel, and I cannot tell you the number of comments I get on those videos, at least weekly, let's not exaggerate now. <laughs> and I get people telling me that they're thinking about locking their hair, they're not sure what's been my experience been so far. I'm 10 weeks in, I'm 10 months in and so far guys like I kid you not it is literally the best hair decision I have ever made god willing I will be here at my 12 month mark to give you guys a 12 month update a one year update oh my god I, so far no regrets still highly recommend best hair decision I've ever made still in love with my locks loving them more as time goes on which is another thing i didn't really expect um, i feel like they are getting longer at least in my opinion they're getting fuller as well so this is what my hair looks like i haven't stretched them at all so um one thing you can do to make them look longer is like do your braid out like you would do on regular natural hair and that definitely makes my hair look a lot more stretched and not as compact. I personally just like to leave my hair to do what it does. <gasps> has has that all that makeup been on display all this time? Oh my gosh. That is annoying. That's the issue with white shirts. Anyway, that's all I really want to talk about in this video, which is to give you guys a little run through on what my maintenance from my micro locks looks like and a quick little update on them for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Those two things really, really help my channel. If you're so inclined to subscribe, I would love to have you. I am planning a very exciting giveaway at my 10K subscriber milestone. If you would like to get on board with that, then please consider subscribing. I think I've been talking for way too long, so I'm going to end this video here. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in my next one. Stay blessed, stay safe, and take care. Bye.